Dubstep and dubstep. Dub Dubstep. Dubstep. Scream it. Dub Dubstep. Dubstep. Casper. Dubstep. Under Bristol. Leeds. Forward. Hatcher. Dubstep. Whatever you want it to be, man. Dubstep. 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 Electronica. Crazy D. Dubstep. Up. From day. Dubstep. Slaughter Mob. Belgium. Poland. Croatia. Dubstep. Dubstep. Bingo. Dubstep. 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 Finland. Austria. New York City. San Francisco. New York City. San Francisco, Los Angeles. Stop step. What's happening? This is screaming, you're watching dub fast. I got into um making dubstep when I was about 14, just from basically the underground garage to, uh, sort of seeing that they're all bees, the wookies. Uh, artwork, sound mental, all them sort of people, and uh, yeah, basically just started going in Big Apple Records because my brother Hijack used to work there. Like met Hatcher, he was playing this sort of underground, underground sort of sound, and I just got in on it from there. Really, I was going velvet rooms from like the age of 14, just building beats and getting them played it forward. Dubstep's whatever you want it to be, man. There's no, I don't like defining it because it's it's something different for everyone else. For some way, some people, it's somewhere to get away on their own and just chill out without having their face watched. For me, it's just about beats, bass, and energy, really. Do you know what I mean? Scream the producer always comes first because it's my livelihood. It's got me to the places to play. Like, I always went to DJ when I was younger, but then it gets a bit, you feel like you're never going to make it because what have you got to offer that at the time? For me, it was like, with DJs like EZ and all people like that, you could never have got into the garage scene, so you've got to start writing your beats. Get looked at as a producer, and then then they want you to come and play your music, innit? A DJ definitely pushes the sound because you're going out, and I'm playing 80% of my own tunes, and I've got the bangers from everyone else. There is some playing sort of some of the best tunes from the scene, and I'm showing people some of the best tunes from a new type of music. Sonar Festival last like a couple of weeks ago was probably the best highlight because uh, because there was 8,000 people there. Do you know what I mean? Just having it to dubstep music and just, just seeing something completely amazing and seeing something that you've sort of grown up pushing and believing in, like, uh, sort of answer everyone's stupid questions of where the music's going. I was listening back to some tracks I'd done in, like, 2003, and it's like, some of the stuff was, it was original for the time, do you know what I mean? And it was like, now some of the stuff I sort of know what I'm going to build. Not all the time. But if I'm going around to do a certain type of track, I'll know, bang, I can use that noise, then I use this noise, put them together, rah, rah, and it's going to be all right. But before it was like, I'd just done what I wanted, because I had no one else to work off, and it was just like, there weren't really much of a scene. There was a few guys doing stuff, so then... But the sound's changed, it's got, the production's got a lot better, like mixed down engineering side of things. It's just got a lot more, at the moment, I'm a lot more energy, more dance floor, more sort of, it's, it's the DJ thing, do you know what I mean? It's obvious because now I've got to make people dance when they go out and play, so I'm making more dance floor sort of stuff. But I've got some alternative sort of shit, like some deep bass line, just subbed out things. But no, no, like, bare different stuff at the minute, to be honest. The judgment was really just a tune me and Benga done. It was just one of many that we'd done at the time, but it was just one that got a lot more a lot more attention and a lot more, just caused a lot more of a stir because he was like 14 and he was 13 I think, or it was around sort of 15, 16 and it was like, the big boys weren't making tunes like this and they had thousand pound studios whereas we just had PCs and samples, do you know what I mean? So it was, yeah, the, the, the tune done us really good, it got us a lot of attention early, which I, I believe because of that track we're still getting attention now. It sort of kept our name at the top of a scene that wasn't really doing much for a little while. And then by the time it did start moving, we were still sort of at the top of the game. I made requests then, basically, just for being bored of turkey sandwiches. I'd had enough of the festive season, I just wanted to get back and writing some beats. And uh, yeah, I just sat down. And to be honest, it started out as a ground tune. But then I thought, what am I, why do I want to do a ground tune? I don't make ground. And then it was, I just sort of put all mine into it. And that was the sort of bass, and I would much about the arpeggiators and stuff. And it just sort of come from there, bro. It didn't blow up. The tune didn't blow for like a year and a half till after I made it, do you know what I mean? It was a weird one because it was like, by the time that blew, I had so much new stuff and stuff that was like banging and that was getting the attention. So it was like, what, do I go back a few steps? Or do I just carry on doing what I do? So I just carried on doing what I was doing, man. Still am now. Breaking tunes like Summer Dreams, it was like, for me, it was, I'm going back into my past of where I've grown up listening to tunes. I was a garage boy, standard, like, 
that, that was the music of my generation, like, of my age group, that was always was. And But I always got into the more dark, jazzy, Zed Bias, mad, slinky, futuristic type things. And for me, that's the sort of stuff they'd done. And it was like, I, f I feel that I got to a stage where I could sort of, I could build tunes like that. Not, not maybe not as great as they did, but I've got to a stage where I, can, I know what I want to get down. So them tunes, if I, I wanted to do it, so I just sort of went, done it. And then we worked with the, the trumpet player and everything. And it just sort of all come together like beautifully. It's still one of my favourite tunes I've done. I love it, man. I suppose it's what happens after you have a big tune. You get all these sort of opportunities and you get people, oh yeah, yeah, come do a remix for me. It's, especially as the music's grand as a whole as well. You, and to, I'm in a good, I'm in a comfortable position, so it's, I get treated comfortably almost. Like I can get, it's easier for me to get remix parts than it is for other people if I like. If I want to do a mix, not saying any track, but there's, I've probably got a lot more chance of being able to do it and get it done official than someone who's never been heard of, do you know what I mean? It's just I enjoy the remix and it gets me out of like lows of like writer's block and and sometimes when I just get a bit stuck, it's like right, I'll go them parts, bang, 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 and just recreate your own tune, man. Me and Temper saw sort of, well, it was sort of I've been going forward for years. And as you know, Sarah runs Temper runs forward and it was it was just sort of waiting to happen. I always worked for Big Apple and then with the shop shutting down and the label going quiet for a long time. It was just the next move. It was who else was there ain't really no one else worth going to other than Temper because I've been pushing it from day, and it's like, uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good relationship, man. I enjoy working with them because they're, they're professional and, and good, man. They, they know how to run things, man. Yeah, first, uh, my first release is coming on my label, Disfigured Dubs. Uh, it's a track I've done with Clue Kid called Sand Snake, and the beat and the AA side is uh, Moving Snares, which is by myself, which is like a tech, tech out roller. But yeah, make sure you get them by it. New York was amazing. I, I appreciate the, the way the people around the world treat me rather than the music as a whole. I get treated good when I go away. And it, it's nice to be able to go like, so far away and get treated like you're still at home. But people are excited about dubstep. Everyone's into it. I haven't played at a party for near on probably over a year where it hasn't been having it. It hasn't been rocking. Like Every party I go to now, it's just, they're just having it, man. And I love playing abroad and it sometimes pisses me off when you come back to London and you see some of the way just crowds in certain places are changing and just the whole attitude towards music in London, we're too greedy, man. Like a lot of people around the world ain't got as much access to music as we have. And it's like people just need to appreciate it more rather than people who go out and fight and shit. I would go out and listen to music or start at home. <laughs> it's not just Stella, man. I'm, I like a beer, do you know what I mean? I've, to be honest, I think, it's probably in my head, but I think I DJ better on uh, after a few cans, like, no, nah. nah, it's just, it, do you know what, the whole Stella Session thing on the Rinch show, it come around from, it was a joke one night, I had a bag of Stellas, it was like my first show, and I was like, ah, oh, it's a Stella Session, and then it just, every so week I got Stellas, and it was like, it's the Stella Session, but yeah, I've had a couple of Evian sessions, just water. <laughs> Like last week I was a bit broke, I was just bang on the waters. Everyone's got their own view, man. I just personally think it's, I think it's because I make music, like, I think it affects final sales, like playing, playing CDs. It don't sound the same at all. And I just think dubs, people want to see a DJ play vinyl or dubs. Just, I think it's just that DJ thing, so they can see what you're playing. I think that's it, when someone's playing a CD, she, it don't look as exciting. I don't know. I, I know that probably doesn't make sense. I'm just not really in it. Like the thing is, if someone like me, I should really be playing because I've got so much stuff. If I played CDs, I could play bit loads of a lot more tunes. But it's just the sound. It's just ain't there. The bottom end ain't there, and the top end t t uh, there too much. It just I don't know. It just don't sound right in clubs. Man. I think music on a whole is is the internet's help because it's like. You can now discuss a tune with someone fucking sitting in, in the North Pole. You can talk your views on a tune or you can play someone your music like that. Bro, you can send an email in seconds. You can bang your tune in there. It's massively important. At the same time, it ruins it because the whole Napster fucking... Bro, my album ended up on there before it even hit the shops. And it's like, why, man? And like, them Russian sites, mate. Russian sites are bootlegging the tunes, man. <laughs> I've got a little keyboard and a PC, man. I use FL Studio and I just lo use loads of plugins. I'm not going into which plugins. <laughs> I ain't got a good set of monitors, man. Switcher, I've got a standard pair of old Tannoys. But it's just, I've, I've had them so long, it's, I might be a bit of an exception because I know the speakers, but I'm getting a, a new pair of uh, 
uh, dying audios and like getting the, getting logic and shit. But it's just I'm waiting for the older. Uh, I'm listening to a lot of new rave sort of indie music at the moment. To be fair, there's a lot of good bands in England. I think, but they're just like Arctic Monkeys, man. They're, they're tearing up the scene. I think like the Klaxons. There's a lot of bands. I think it's it's you sort of growing up. You don't. You tend to fight against that music when you're living in sort of an urban culture. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's for the for the like the like the Devon boys or whatever, I don't know, like, but it's, yeah, I've been listening to like, a lot of techno, a lot of house, I've been making some house, and yeah, I'm feeling that there's loads of producers at the minute, there's like Mala from Digital Mystics, obviously, all them boys, like Koki's smashing, fuck, like, genius, Bengo's working on his new album, which is going to be massive, Burial, Code 9, everyone, bro, everyone in the scene at the minute, I'm feeling, there's a lot of good music coming from Dubstep at the moment, just look at my MySpace, and, uh, yeah, I'm about, just come and check me in your local town, innit? Uh, you can hear me playing every Wednesday night, uh, 9 to 11, Grand Meridian time on uh, www.rinse.fm, the home of underground music. Um, yeah, that's the main place you can listen to my music at uh, www.myspace.com slash screamuk, all one word. And then you can catch me playing places like Forward at um, Plastic People, Shoreditch, uh, DMZ at Brixton Mass. Uh, yeah, just all over the show, man. No, I'm so big, making music for St. Kels. I couldn't, probably to be, I can't really ever see another me doing anything else, like from now till I'm in a box, to be honest. Well, like, I can't, I, you couldn't get me in an office because I can't stand discipline. I couldn't work in those shops or nothing, so I can't be, t I can't be told what to do, man. Well, I used to play football, but music, I just got into music and got into the, the non athletic crowd at school, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like when everyone was at playing football, I was down a graveyard with birds and fucking smoking and all that, do you know what I mean? Uh, this is Screaming, you're watching Dub Fox. I'm Dubstep in America, it's growing, it's a growing phenomenon, it is... It's expanding, it's, it's exponential right now, man, it's growing by leaps and bounds, the sound is growing in so many places, so many different areas across the country, New York, Baltimore, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Houston, um, even in North America, in areas like Vancouver, Toronto, the sound is just growing, man, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good question. Um, I would think the, I guess, the mecca, or the, the focal point of dubstep in America, it's really two places. Uh, San Francisco, obviously, with the Grime City Boys, with Child and Subtech and Monk and Jamin and The One and everybody else out there. But I think the real party is the Dub War Party in New York City, um, with myself as one of the residents, MC Juka Lee is the resident MC, and Dave Q is, I guess, the mastermind of the whole Dub War idea and the whole party and everything else, with helping booking overseas acts and bringing the residents in and other local talent from the New York City and the national area. Um, dub War would be the party, New York City, yeah, definitely. Well, I guess getting into dubstep was really more of me getting into electronic dance music. What I did is I, I was, I was a Baltimore club DJ years and years and years ago. I used to play that. Then I, I, I got out of DJ and I just stopped playing. I lost the love for Baltimore club. Um, I didn't touch the decks for like three and a half, four years. But then I heard some old school garage. I heard, heard old stuff by Wookie and all that old master step stuff from back in the day. Then. I started hearing about horsepower, then hearing about dubstep. Then I started buying dubstep, then one thing led to another, and that's kind of how I got into it. Um, about four years ago, there's a party in Baltimore called Starscape, and a bunch of the big UK DJs that were playing the stuff that we now call dubstep were there. Guys like RSJ, Jada Flex, Betty Ill was there, Zed Bias was there, and Hatcha was there. And Hatcha was playing all these old tunes, old screaming banger tunes that are now classic tunes now. He had them on dub plate back then. This was the middle of 02. And, um, and I'm listening to these tunes and I'm just like, damn. That's, and, and I was already sort of getting into dubstep back then. You know, playing a lot of horsepower stuff, some early, I mean, earlier Mark I stuff and Plastic Man stuff. And then one thing led to another and here I am now. Just being all about dubstep and I love it. Oh man, there were a bunch of tunes that night, man. That RSJ tune said the spider. Um, that banger tune, Skank, the scream tune, the bug. Oh man, what else, what else? That Zeb Bias tune, Ring the Alarm, that remix he did, they were all played that night, and every single tune, I was just like, damn, that's, 
big tune, another big tune, big tune after big tune, and that's what...